Hi and welcome back to another video. Today we want to compare this Western Digital Raptor X from 2006 to a Generation 5 NVMe drive. So that's going to be a battle of two complete different technologies in several different aspects, starting from like the physical shape and also all the like technical things that come with it, uh, specs, speed and everything. So that should be quite entertaining, especially because the Western Digital Raptor X, even for today's standards, is still quite special. Maybe not anymore for capacity reasons, but for the raw specs, for example, with 10,000 RPM speed of the platters, and also that it came with a window to look inside the HDD. So that should be quite entertaining to see how this 17-year-old HDD can keep up with a very recent PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD and as you can see this is still originally sealed so this I don't know has been sitting in my basement for like 10 years or something I always wanted to keep it as a collectible and maybe use it someday and that's going to be today but first I will remove this like annoying foil well it was good for protection but it's quite annoying to film. First inspecting the packaging you can see the Western Digital Raptor X with a SATA interface and it's listing 150 gigabyte of capacity and I also learned from the previous video with the AliExpress SSDs that GO in this case should be French 4 gigabyte because it was listing TO on 4 terabyte on the other video and a lot of people commented about that Thanks for your input in that regard. And you can also see the platter speed with 10,000 RPM. Just looking at system compatibility, you can see Windows 2000 and XP. So that's where you can see that's a quite dated uh, HDD, but it should still work fine on Windows 11. And some more additional specs on the backside, for example, again, uh, the speed and then 16 megabyte cache, 4.6 milliseconds seek time. So they're advertising the world's fastest SATA drive. Also, of course, advertising the build to last 1.2 million hours MTBF, so mean time between failure. I can definitely remember how MTBF was a highly debated topic back then, because obviously if you look at 1.2 million hours, and I didn't calculate it, but probably that's like 150 or 200 years. First of all, HDDs have not been around for 200 years, so how would you test that? And obviously, even if you think about it, it's highly unlikely that an HDD would last for 200 years running all day long, right? But they made it differently. So they, for example, took 1000 drives and ran them for 30 days. So that would be 720,000 operating hours. And then they, for example, said, okay, 10 failed out of those 1000 drives. So they divided the operating hours by 10. And then they came up with, for example, 72,000 hours MTBF. So that's how they kind of came around with this number, which was supposed to be an indicator of how long the drive would last, which is kind of confusing. But if you think about it nowadays, obviously with uh, SSDs, just the time alone is no more the limitation of the drive's longevity, but it's more like the amount of like bits and bytes that you write to the drive which is limiting the, exp the life expectancy of an SSD. Whereas back then with mechanical drives, because you have like bearings inside and everything, it's just the operational hours that it would eventually kill the drive. So let's open this. And as you can see, it's all still brand new and sealed. There is a quite interesting cable included. And once removed from the packaging, you can see it's just a normal SATA cable. But on the other side, it's the, da the data connection plus the voltage supply, which first look doesn't really make any kind of sense. And opening the HDD, we first get greeted with this note that basically tells us that the window is quite sensitive, especially to pressure. So we should be quite careful. And here we have the famous Raptor X from Western Digital. And we have this window that allows to just look inside the HDD, which I still find very fascinating because you can see the platter and also this tiny arm that is responsible for reading and writing the data to the drive. And we should be able to see this in action 
very soon. If we turn it around, you can see also the area with the PCB where all the controllers and everything are sit on. If you've seen a lot of HDDs in your life, you will notice that this PCB and the entire area down there is actually quite huge. And to now revert back to our SATA cable, which we showed earlier, the blue one, you can now notice, and that's also kind of unique with this HDD, I think there are others like that, but it's quite rare that you have on the left side a SATA connection, well the tiny one for data, the left one is the current supply for SATA, and then on the right side you actually also have a Molex power supply. So if you want to use the blue one, the blue SATA connection, you can use that for data, and at the same time use Molex on the right to, for example, use this as an external drive. If we take a look from the side, you can see that there are also quite a lot of tiny cutouts and those are inside the aluminium molding and that's just for dissipating additional heat because those drives were actually getting quite hot. The main reason why these drives were getting quite warm was mainly because of the high speed of the platters of about 10,000 RPM. Whereas mainstream drives back then had about 5,400 RPM and the good mainstream or like desktop drives had 7,200 RPM. So that was already quite a bit higher. These came from the server market and were just adapted with basically the new interface which was SATA. And this is also using the first SATA generation, so 1.5 gigabit per second, which allows about 150 megabyte per second transfer rate. And even though SATA 3.0 was like basically already getting standard when this drive came out, Western Digital also said it doesn't really make sense to use it because you are not limited by 150 megabyte per second, because at least if I remember the reviews correctly from back then, they were hitting about 70 megabyte per second, which I'm really curious about to see what kind of read and write speeds which we can get from this drive today in the test. But first, I'm curious what kind of Windows installation speed we will see. I did already testing yesterday with the Crucial T700, that's um, generation five NVMe SSD, which I bought because I didn't own one and I wanted to basically get like old tech versus latest tech comparison. And just the first step in Windows installation where it's like copying the files from the USB stick to the drive takes less than a minute with this one. So let's see how long this takes. The drive is connected and I'm curious to see if already just when we start it up, we can see something through the window. At least it's running and the arm already moved to the side. I'm a bit worried right now because I'm not even sure if it's the USB stick or the HDD, but there is only one drive detected in the Windows installation. It tells me zero megabytes, which is, yeah, worrying. And even in BIOS, if I go to just uh, like connected devices, if I want to see what's plugged, no information. That's not good. And in the drive manager, it's showing up one drive, but it's not fully initialized, but I also cannot initialize it because if I want to, it just tells me that the drive was not found. So all in all, that's not too promising. I'm going to try a different controller. It could be that a uh, SATA controller on the board is damaged or maybe not compatible. So I'm just using this PCIe one. Maybe this will wake up the drive. In the device manager, at least it's detecting a device. Sorry for using a German OS, but it's showing up the driver date as 2006, but that should be just be the driver date of Microsoft, which probably doesn't tell us anything. Not sure. I'm just switching to the blue cable right now. I don't think that's a power issue because obviously you can see that the drive is running. It could be that my other SATA cable is dead, which I don't think, but I'm just trying everything. One more thing, just checking quickly with disk part. So it's good uh, to check what this detects, but yeah. So the bottom one is the two terabyte NVMe SSD and the top one, which should be my HDD, still detected with zero bits and bytes. One thing that's also kind of obscure is that it's always stuck at this screen for at least two or three minutes. Like it's trying to detect something which it's not successfully doing. But if I unplug the HDD, it's, I mean, it's stuck at this screen for, I don't know, five seconds. 
Meanwhile, about one week later, also a ton of tests later, I'm quite certain that this drive is dead for whatever reason, which is quite ironic thinking about that we just talked about the 1.2 million hours of MTBF. Meanwhile, the drive didn't even survive like sitting in my basement for 50,000 hours without doing anything. That's, I don't know, not sure if HDDs just die quicker if you don't use them or something. This seems kind of odd. But luckily I found another drive online at eBay was used. I'm not sure, I didn't test it yet, but I hope this one will make it. As an alternative and maybe also as a different subject, I also found a Velociraptor, which is Velociraptor, Velociraptor. Yeah, you get what I mean. That's the most recent of the Western Digital Raptor drives. It's definitely also quite interesting. The drive on the left was my broken one. I think this should be the manufacturing date. It says 14th of January 2007. This one states 15th of June 2006. So this is like half year older. And I will just connect it to the system and hope that this one is alive. First look, it's spinning. And the arm was doing a little more movement than the other drive but let's check in BIOS. That indeed looks a lot better. As you can see on SATA port zero, the Western Digital Drive is detected with 150 GB of capacity. And also the Windows setup as expected looks a lot better. We can now see the drive with 139.6 GB detected. And now I'm curious how long the Windows installation takes. The Windows installation is basically split into two parts. The first one is extracting the files from the USB drive to the hard drive. And then the second part is the actual installation. The first part using the Gen 5 drive took two minutes and 54 seconds. And the second part took three minutes and seven seconds. So overall, pretty much six minutes. So less than 10 minutes from installation to Windows, which is nowadays pretty quick. So let's see how long this one takes. It's pretty difficult to see, but there are small movement on the arm. And that's also something nice to see if you're not maybe that familiar with HDDs because the drive has just been formatted and it's now basically writing to an empty drive. And the arm is just doing tiny movements on the side because it starts writing from the side pretty much to the center. Now again with the macro lens. Unfortunately, we cannot see the head of the arm on the left, but you can see the quick movements. Part two of the installation is still running. We already crossed 10 minutes mark. You can also see I attached a thermocouple to the HDD because I noticed it's definitely getting a bit warm. It's getting close to 50 degrees Celsius. Just the pure installation speed aside, I mean, if I just want to do something on the system, everything takes forever to load and to open and it just feels a lot more laggy than if you're used to an SSD system. Who would have thought it's a lot slower installing Windows 11 to an old Raptor drive than an SSD? So the first part slowed down to 5 minutes 11 instead of 2 minutes 54. And the second part took a lot longer. It went from 3 minutes and 7 seconds to 10 minutes and 48 seconds. Which means that overall we ran from about 6 minutes installation time to 16 minutes installation time, comparing a Gen 5 drive to the old HDD. One and a half hours later, I just completely underestimated how long it would take simply to install Windows and also Windows updates. It took so long to get all the Windows updates done compared to the SSD. Now you can also see the temperature is pretty much stable at about 50, 60 degrees Celsius. It's a bit uncomfortable to touch it, but it's still in a fine region for those drives. And if you think back to the cases back then, and also you have to keep in mind that I'm using like a textile surface, which definitely is not going to improve temperatures. It's more like an insulator from the bottom. And at the same time, if you had a little bit of airflow and like these heat sinks on the side, then temperature was usually fine. Quick look into Crystal Disk Info. We can see that the drive has been powered on over 20,000 times in a time frame of about 9,100 hours, which is one year and 15 days. Sounds quite a lot of power ons. It's like every 30 minutes, which could be related to some power saving stuff, which is usually built into Windows that after a certain amount of time, the HDD powers down and then comes back up. I'm not sure if this is what's also counted in here. If you know more about that, maybe let me know in the comments. Apart, apart from that, the state seems to be good. 
We are now comparing our HDD to our SSD. And first of all, I'm running with the Crucial T700 Crystal Disk Mark. You can see in sequential read, we have 12,400 megabyte per second. And in sequential write, we have 11,800 megabyte per second, which is just enormously quick. We are now repeating the same test with our Raptor HDD. Already the creating file took a lot longer because it's one gigabyte of size and you can see read is about 77 megabyte per second. 8 megabyte per second write seems a bit low, not sure, okay. So yeah, that's why you have more than one test. That's why I had three sequential write tests and now we can see 71 megabyte per second in write, which is actually faster than the reviews stayed from back then. Most of them were listing about 50 to 60 megabyte per second. So that's actually quite nice. I also wanted to perform some kind of real world test. So just some game load times, whatever. But the problem is it only has 150 gigabyte of capacity. And after just installing Windows 11 and also adding drivers and stuff, you are left with about 55 gigabyte, which is not that much. And all the recent games have a lot more than that. Then I checked and Shadow of the Tomb Raider has about 36 gigabytes. So I'm just installing that right now. And the limiting factor in installing the game right now for me is the drive because I have a gigabit connection here, internet connection. So on a good day, depending on Steam, I can download with something between 100 megabytes to 120 megabytes per second, sometimes even faster. And right now I'm downloading with about 50 megabytes to 70 megabytes per second, simply because I'm just limited by the HDD. And if you just compare the plain numbers of sequential read and write tests with the SSD versus the HDD, we are talking about 150 to 160 times faster speed on the Gen 5 drive, which is completely mind blowing. But at the same time, I'm just being fully honest, in my daily PC, I just cannot tell a difference if I'm using a Gen 3 or Gen 4 or Gen 5 drive. Like on paper, obviously Gen 5 drive is faster, but like for me, Gen 3 drive is like more than fast enough. I cannot tell any kind of difference, but maybe let me know your experience. Now that the drive is loaded with more than 50% of capacity, you can also see that the arm definitely moved in its position where it's like starting to write while downloading the game. And that again shows how the HDD is working because if it just starts from stock, it would start to write from the outside because at the outer part of the disk, the speed on the disk is just higher than if you compare it right at the motor in the center. That's why the HDD would always start to write from the outside to the inside because the speed on the platter and the outside area is simply quicker than on here. And also now, depending on what kind of data you're accessing or you're trying to access, the arm has to just move further, which then increases the latency to access the data. So the fuller your drive becomes, the more latency in theory you will have. We could mainly show the positioning of the arm and the capacity effect because we just formatted the drive and went with the fresh OS install. Because if you use your OS or you're used to use your OS on an HDD for a longer time period, then obviously you like uninstall a game and you have fresh files and delete files and different file size capacity stuff then it starts that the arm just randomly places the file somewhere also depends on the load of the HDD like how much the capacity is loaded and then you start running into fragmentation which then used to feel like the system over a long time just slows down for whatever reason and then it always started that you have to defrag your HDD which is yeah I'm just happy that we don't have to run these things anymore these days because that was always a pain that after a long time period, like Windows and everything just became incredibly slow. While Tomb Raider is still downloading and installing on that drive, we're taking a quick look at the Velocity Raptor, which is basically the last generation of Western Digital drives. There was one more which came without the ice pack. Ice pack is this aluminum frame around this 2.5 inch HDD, which was also quite unique because typically 2.5 inch HDDs only were used in laptops or most of the time, whereas this was obviously a 3.5 inch HDD. But it was still also running with 10,000 RPM and it has an increased cache of 64 megabyte while this had only 16 megabyte. And with one terabyte of capacity, it would still be usable this day. So again, we're running Crystal Disk Mark to get a comparison number to compare it with the Raptor X on the left. 
First run, not quite sure why, the read speed was quite low with 115, it should be above 200. Write was in place with 201. I'm honestly not sure what exactly is going on with this drive because it's not used. It's just an additional drive that's hooked up to the system. I rebooted, formatted the drive again and everything, but it still shows with a very low read rate. So what I'm going to measure right now is how long does it take from launching Tomb Raider out of Steam to actually be in the game scene playing. The game loading time running the HDD was 2 minutes and 49 seconds from Steam to the game scene itself. Whereas with the SSD we only had to wait 37 seconds. And now if you keep in mind that this HDD was state of the art in 2006. Then you also have to keep in mind that like 2005, 2004, the drives were quite a lot slower. And at least me, I often forget. I'm not sure what the drive is doing, if you can hear it, but yeah. At least me, I often forget how much you often had to wait for like applications to launch, for your system to power on. And these days things just drastically improved. I'm still not sure if I would get a Gen 5 drive simply because they get so warm and just from my personal experience, you don't really need the speed in a daily system. Like Gen 3 and 4 drives are usually more than enough. But you can let me know feedback about that. Yeah, that was one more of the Hardware Legend series videos. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.